Good morning. Let us first look at the execution of some of the sample programs which we will discuss in the class. So, this is this one just draws a simple window. There is another one which draws a window which is titled CS101 window. Of course, you cannot see this here, but in a smaller size, can you see a string written in between? What does it say? Oh, you can read that. Okay, fine. So, this merely demonstrates how you can write text in a specific box inside a window that you have opened. Here is another sample which says give a width and height for the window. So, let us say 15 and 15 and then it says how many points you want to draw. So, it is basically you have let us say electrocardiogram analysis, you have various points on the ECG you just want to display them. Of course, here I do not have an ECG, so I am randomly generating points and displaying them with some labels. So, let us say I want to display 10 points. So, what the program does is it generates 10 random points using the random number generator, but uses then graphics to plot these points. So, can you see this? So, it says 0th point at 3 1, first point at 4 4, 7th point at 4 2, etcetera, etcetera. Remember the coordinate system is x is increasing in this direction and y is increasing in this direction. Here is another sample. It draws pattern. So, these patterns are drawn by straight lines. So, you draw large number of straight lines at a particular from starting point to end point and you will see patterns there. All these patterns could be drawn. Basically, it is line drawing with a specific purpose. Here is another program which draws some basic shapes, rectangle, eclipse, oh sorry, ellipse. This is another shape drawing program, arbitrarily it expects an input, any input I can give here. So, this is drawing more shapes and each of these ordinarily would be a very difficult task to write complete graphic program. So, remember the classes that we mentioned, somebody has written a window, EZ window library of classes. The first class was simple window which we saw. There are other classes like rectangle shape, line, ellipse, text, etcetera, etcetera. Using these, we are showing this. Here is a one which draws any picture. So, this is called a bitmap, bitmap drawing. The EZ windows has a facility that if you have any bitmap image, you can display it there. The problem is that it expects bitmaps in a specific file format called XPM. Remember, I had mentioned a lot of file formats. So, normal for file formats are BMP, JPJ, etc. So, ordinarily this was a photograph from my camera which was a JPEG file. There is a convert utility which comes along with the EZ windows package. It will be available with you. So, you can take any image with practically any format. This is a convert to XPM. It will convert it to XPM. And once it is converted, you can show it. This program is not just simply showing that. This program actually illustrates that you can move this image. So, basically how to capture a mouse position. For example, if I if I move the mouse here, you can see the pointer here. Now, if I click, it will move the image that side. If I come here and click here, it will move the image here. So, basically there is a function to capture the mouse movement and set some position. And there is another function to erase an image at some original place and redraw it at some other place. There is Oh, I have not compiled this. So, let us say I want to I want to plot a graph. Let me compile. Incidentally, you cannot compile this program using normal compile. It requires a special thing. I will discuss what that compile is. 
So, let me compile this new sign. and then let me execute this new sign. It basically plots a sign function. Why is it plotting so slowly? Just to illustrate that various points are plotted, after every 500 points, I have put a sleep command. A sleep is another inbuilt function in Ubuntu. After the word sleep, in bracket, you write some number, those many seconds it will sleep. So, in fact, it is worthwhile. So, here you see if count modulo 500 equal to 0, sleep for 1 second, that is what I have stated. Suppose I just comment this and recompile this and run it again, it will draw it quickly. So, it is drawing a sign graph, but you can draw any graph. Notice that the points which are drawn here are different from the points which you drew in earlier graph for the ECG. There the points were sort of small rectangular block. Here I am using a different technique of, uh, remember what I said that you cannot draw points in EZ windows. So, either you draw a small rectangle to show a point, here I am drawing a line from a point to itself. So, that becomes a point, it is cheating. Okay. So, these are various programs. Uh, we shall see the graphic classes and how to use them and so on. Now, this is what you can do. So, most of you if you wish to add any kind of graphical user interface or any kind of graphic display are most welcome to use this. There will be a tar file called ezwindows.tar.gz and the instructions will be there in the next week's lab handout. There is no regular lab, no assignments, but use that all the sample programs will be there. So, you can actually compile, see them, make some modifications and actually read those programs to understand how graphic programming is done. The important point in any class library is, is that so far, you know, we had seen all the procedural programming paradigms, if then else, while. To simplify matters, we learned how to write function definitions. The whole idea is, how can I reduce the amount of text that I have to write in my program and yet achieve something remarkable. So, to reduce this, I keep on looking for things which I have to do multiple times, like a function call. And then I say I write that function once and that is the end of it. In exactly the same fashion, the object oriented paradigm extends that notion to permit you to define classes, member functions and objects of those classes. So, once the class properties are defined somewhere, any object of that class that you define automatically inherits all member functions and you can execute those member functions. That is the reason why the graphic programming becomes so simple because somebody has thoughtfully prepared a large number of classes, defined all the member functions for those classes, defined all the elements for those classes. In fact, when you write your project programs, you are expected to do that. You can either use classes and class library functions or you can use conventional functions the choice is yours. So, we shall be seeing a few things before we look at the graphics thing which was supposed to be at the end. We will look at another preprocessor macro which is an extension of hash define and then we will revisit the notion of classes and objects. In the process, we shall see another important class library which is provided by C++ called string library. We shall see how uh, the facilities uh, compare with our conventional handling of strings, a very brief example. And then of course, we shall spend some time looking at the graphics using EZ windows. So, here is the notion of preprocessor macros. You are familiar with these. You know if I said preprocessor macro name followed by a sequence of tokens. Sequence of tokens is a keyword. It is actually a list. So far, we had used only one item, say 45,000. Remember last time we discussed this, that if I say hash defined max size 45,000 and later on in my program, if I say int field data max size, an array I am defining with max size as the value and then somewhere else I have for int k equal to 0, k less than max size, etcetera, etcetera. So, I might use max size many times in my program, but 
because of this hash defined macro physically all the max size occurrences will be replaced as if in a g edit find and replace by the number 45000 so this helps as i said you can define a a fixed size or typically max height max width or whatever such parameters once and use them many times and if you want to change that you need to change only once in your program recompile and everything will work there is a greater usage of such preprocessor macros because these macros also permit parameter substitution parameter definition and parameter substitution almost like functions almost but they are not functions because functions are invoked dynamically here the preprocessor macro is invoked in the preprocessing state before compilation so let us look at one of these this is called a parameterized macro a parameterized macro will have a macro name followed by certain parameters and this list of tokens will use those parameters for defining what the replacement is going to be consider this for example define absolute x so absolute is the name of the macro x is a parameter and wherever absolute something occurs in my program it will be replaced by the right hand side instead of x that something will be there what does this macro do if x is greater than equal to 0 question mark so what is the value of this expression you remember this kind of if statement this condition is evaluated if it is true the value of the expression is the first value written if it is false the value of the expression is the second value all that it is doing is it is setting the value to either x if it is positive or minus x if it is negative in the process it is getting absolute value of x now every time i need an absolute value i will have to write this kind of expression or i will have to put an if statement if z greater than 0 then exp val equal to z else exp val equal to minus z and then use exp val wherever else instead like the abs function in built in library of c you have absolute definition of yourself now if within the program suppose you write this statement z is equal to 5 star absolute y minus 73.5 the physical occurrence of absolute y will be replaced by this so this is compiled before compilation so your text itself will change and then this text will go to the compiler of course it will correctly compile okay you can of course write macros with multiple parameters and all those parameters will be taken care remember it is not that this x is replaced by all of this so this y is replaced by all of this. it's not a single character replacement it is absolute bracket x bracket so the word absolute is to be replaced but what it will be replaced by is decided by this and instead of x whatever parameter you have given will be used for it so this is clear this is simple simple we look at another class in c++ called the string class and the string library this is completely different from the conventional library that we have been using which is called what c string so we say include c string in our programs this is the library that we use and so far how we have been denoting or or representing strings we represent strings as a null terminated sequence of characters stored in an array so you you have to take the responsibility of defining a large size array then push characters one by one whenever the last character of a string goes in you have to push a backslash zero c in and c out statements for example automatically include a backslash zero at the end similarly whenever you want to operate upon those arrays you have to actually keep looking at those characters individually terminate your processing when you encounter a backslash zero there are built in functions like string compare string copy etc they all depend on the fact that there is a backslash zero at the end and there is no normal operator available you want to concatenate two string why can't i say my final string is equal to this string plus this string of course that plus should not be meant to be a addition of numbers so if i use plus in the context of such strings it should mean concatenation now how do i convey this meaning the notion of classes permits you actually not only to define member data elements not only to define member functions but it also permits you to redefine operators for that class now since plus is already defined as an operator for addition if you redefine that it is called overloading the operator 
like you you have a truck which is already carrying lot of luggage you put one more package on top of it you are overloading the truck now that package is different from other package in exactly the same fashion if the symbol plus is used in normal arithmetic it will mean plus in any c++ program but if you use it in the context of strings of this special class then it will suddenly mean to the compiler that com concatenation is implied let us look at some examples string class that's the name of the class so the library that you use is not c string you have to say include string the string class itself is defined in in c++ so let us see the definition you say include string here string means get the string classes of c++ library i want to use them so let us look at how it is being used i am now defining c string is a class so i can define objects of the string class the string class is actually normal strings that you deal with but you don't have to worry about backslash zero nothing like that in fact you don't even know how these strings are internally represented you don't even know that is a private data member of that string you don't have to worry about how it is represented so you just define objects let's say str1 str2 str3 these are three string objects each one of them can contain a string what is the maximum size of the string you don't have to worry about it it's a implementation dependent size it's a very large size you can actually assign to string one or any one of these objects any string of any you don't have to worry about it. of course if there is an exception the system will crib about it later notice what i am doing str1 is equal to computer this is not an assignment i am making to a character array which must be done only at the time of definition this is an assignment i am making to a string object and this is perfectly valid so when i say str1 equal to something in double quotes that string becomes a value of str1 str1 now is a proper string object similarly str2 is equal to programming if i say str1 is equal to str1 plus str2 str3 equal to str1 plus str2 this plus is the concatenation of notice this c out str1 less less two spaces less less str2 what does this c out produce this will produce on the output computer blank blank programming right suppose i say c out str3 what will i get so there are a few subtleties which you must keep in mind blank spaces in between two strings are never automatically put together so you need to put them separate you can actually do something like str1 itself you define to have a blank here or while concatenating nothing prevents you from saying str3 equal to str1 plus double quote blank double quote plus this because double quote blank double quote is a string constant this so just like you are saying c out the difference in c out and this is that c out will merely print strings in a legible fashion but internally if you want a composite string okay computer space programming as a single string you can't have it without concatenate now you will recall that if i have a first name middle name last name of a person it was greatly difficult for me to extract these and put them separately and so on i could actually have a data structure in which first name is stored separately last name is stored separately and yet i could create a, a full name equal to first name plus blank plus second name and that would become a valid full string with full name i can do variety of things like that. just as you have functions in classical c string library to compare strings to concatenate strings etc etc there are some functions in string library as well however c++ still depends largely on the classical method of representing strings so what it does simply is it provides a special function called c_string what it does 
it will take a string object from the class library and convert it into an array of string with backslash 0 at the end. So, you can take any string, convert it into a regular array and then do whatever processing that you want to do normally. Later on, you can again assign it back to a string object, you will get that object back. We again visit the notion of application programmer interface because that is the most important conclusion that we can derive out of all the studies of different elements of programming that we have seen so far. Namely, while we can write programs for anything and everything, detailing every small action that we wish to take, it makes a lot of sense for us to, rewrite, to write some commonly used statements together. Originally, we saw that as a function. Now, we know that we can do that as a class library with class member functions. Now, whenever you write functions in the classical style of C++ or whenever you define classes and member functions, the function names actually provide you with an application programmer interface. That means, when you write your main program, you are actually invoking only that function name with parameters, function name with parameters and you are only defining either objects or variables of the specific type that you have. Okay. So, these function names and the parameters that you need to pass to functions and how the functions behave becomes an application programmer interface for you. In fact, I would say if is an application programmer interface for you because if you say if x greater than 0 or something, then the C++ defines how that particular segment will behave. So, every statement in some sense is an application programmer interface, but most of the statements are direct instruction and API is a higher level abstraction. Considering this, the modern programming of any professional style actually attempts to define as many APIs as you can. That is part of the design of your project or design of a large programming system. Unlike normally when you start writing a program for anything that any problem that comes, here you will first think of writing either functions or classes and member functions. And you may not write the full details of the implementation of each and every function or class, but you should write that prototype. What you are doing? You are defining an API. You are saying that while developing this project, while developing this large program, these are the APIs that I will use. That you can define at the design stage. Now, somebody else may have a responsibility of implementing those APIs. So, writing the detailed functions, writing the detailed, uh, doing the detailed testing, etc. Now, API is a very common term in most professional programming. EZ window happens to be a package which has taken this API to heart. What they have done is they have usurped the int main routine. Int main routine when you use EZ windows cannot be written by you. They say we write it. Instead, they say you have to write a program called API main and link that with my library which contains the main program. So, that is a peculiarity, it is normally not so. Normally, you would be entitled to write your main program and combine it with other APIs through the class libraries, through the function libraries, etc. In a nutshell then, any API will consist through functions. So, prototype function definitions and the parameters must be known or public member functions of classes which also constitute an API. It is in this context that we look at the graphics. Remember last time I mentioned very briefly what a graphics window system would be. So, basically we want to deal with graphic objects. We want to draw graphic objects on our screen. We typically draw these graphic objects in some windows. So, whenever you work on Ubuntu for example, you will open an editor window, you will open a terminal window, you may open a browser window for files and you may say click here for this file, edit it, save it there, go to terminal, compile it, run it. Okay, so, these windows help you. So far, in all these windows, you have been displaying, editing and using text. But the fact that text is being displayed in different windows, the fact that windows are being displayed with some borders should tell you immediately that there must be some basic graphical capabilities available with the system. As a matter of fact, all systems after it was discovered that you could handle pixel level drawings on a monitor. The early monitors were not like that. The early monitors could display only text, nothing else. But when these graphic monitors came into being, operating systems and programming languages realized that I should be able to exploit this 
facility and show some graphics. Various graphic libraries were built at the PC level or at the personal computer level. These, these were the first ones to be built. In fact, the first major graphics was built by Apple computers way back when their first Apple machines were meant to be used by individual people. Microsoft followed suit and of course Microsoft Windows became the most popular operating system so people started using that. Unix which was originally not meant to be used by individuals, it was meant to be a server class operating system did not pay attention to graphics and audio for quite some time. However, somewhere around 80s and 90s a major project was undertaken in some universities in the US and in AT&T Bell Lab and a graphic library or graphic system got developed which is called X11 graphics. So X11 is the name to the base root graphic facilities in any Unix machine. X11 is not very easy to use directly. It was meant for programmers with high exposure to that kind of handling. Now people wanted something simple to use. So a large number of graphic packages were then developed around X11 to give you simplified facilities. EZ Windows is the simplest of the simple packages which actually uses X11 at the base. It permits you to draw different windows. It permits you to draw different shapes like rectangles, circles, lines, etc. Permits you to write text strings. Permit you to draw bitmap images. This such packages are developed and used. Now EZ Windows is actually a library of classes. So it is not a library of function. The API is not a function call where the functions are. The API is a class interface. So what you have to do is you have to use all the classes which are defined in EZ Windows in your program. Define objects belonging to those classes and operate upon those objects using the member functions which are defined for those classes. So as long as you understand what are those classes, what are the properties of those classes and how do you invoke member functions, you are done. Everything else will be taken care of by the library. As I mentioned, you need to name your main function as int api main. You can't name them as int main. That's a requirement of the class library EZ Windows. These are the basics we had seen last time. I may want to draw some shape, some window inside my screen. So the window will have width and height and window will have a certain position and window will have some text which is written on top. So this is a simple window. Okay. Having drawn a simple window, I might want to draw various shapes here. I want to write some string here. These are the facilities I want to learn how to use such facilities in the graphics window. So here is something that we had very briefly seen last time. EZ Windows is the library name and the major class is a simple window class. A simple window class permits us to define a window object. I can have as many windows as I want and I can render all of those windows, keep all of them alive and draw something in one window, something else in another window, something else in third window, etc., etc. Each window will be an object of the windows class. Remember, each object is independent. Each object is worked upon by the member functions of that class. So in one window, I can draw a rectangle, one window object, another window object, I can draw a line, whatever I wish to do. The basic way of defining an object of, say, W of this class is to say simple window W. And then I write some name here, sample window, CS101 window, my window, abracadabra, whatever. This becomes the title that will come on top of that window. Please note that the window style is frozen. You, can't, you cannot control it. The window style is a boundary, then a line somewhere and a text title that you specify is written somewhere. The font of that text is frozen. You would like, of course, when you become professional programmers, you would like variety of freedom in that. Why, why do I have to write font in a small size when I write text inside the window? Why does the title font come like that? Can't I change the font? Can't I change the style? I should be able to, but EZ Windows does not permit that. There are other Windows packages which will permit that. Once you define an object called W, all the member functions of that class can operate upon that W. So W dot open is, an, is a function. 
w dot close is a function. Here I have specified something called width and height, but you can also specify the position where this window should appear. If you do not prescribe the position, there is a default. Incidentally, when you download EZ windows, there is a whole lot of documentation available which describes every class, every member function of the class, the meaning of the parameters in those member functions and what is the behavior, what are the return values, etc., etc. I would suggest that you should read that entire manual first as a storybook and then maybe attempt to look at executing some of those programs, some of those features. Here is a rectangle class. Remember, a rectangle class is a different from window class. Window itself is rectangular, but that is incidental. Having drawn a window, say W, inside that W, you want to draw a rectangle. So, how can you do that? First of all, you have to specify the window in which it is to be displayed, because you might have multiple window objects. In that window, what is the position in which you want to draw the rectangle? Which color you want to draw that rectangle? And the width and height of a rectangle. So once you specify this, the member function which can draw rectangle can actually draw this. There are several member functions. Draw is the major function. So once you define the attributes of a rectangle object, remember rectangle is a class. So you have to define a rectangle object. Once you define a rectangle object with these parameters, it can be drawn. It can be drawn where? In the window in which you have specified that object. Draw is a plain draw. Suppose you have drawn, and suppose you have drawn multiple things. Now you know somewhere briefly that in this window W3, there is a rectangle object called R5. But I have forgotten how I have drawn this R5. Or maybe a friend of mine in the project has drawn this R5. So I don't know what color he has, or where it is drawn, etc. I would like to inquire from the EZ window system, hey, Baba, where have you drawn this? I can do that by running any one of these functions. Get color will get me color of that object. Get width will get me width of that object. Get height will get me height of that object. Here is a sample program. So I mentioned sample programs. I am just describing a few simple samples. The detailed of S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, all of these I will be uploading it uh, by tonight. So it will be available along with the tar file that you get for graphics. You can use it. Apart from these, there are various samples that are already available. So, here is a definition. I say simple window W, my first window. W dot open, type any character to remove it, either control C or something. Okay. There is a small problem in EZ windows package. The program you will be executing on terminal window, which is one window. When you execute this program, another window will be drawn. Now, typically, that hidden cursor actually goes to that window. No input can be accepted from your terminal because that window is not alive at this moment. The new window which you have drawn is alive. So, you have to actually drag that pointer by mouse, click onto your terminal window and then type a character to terminate this particular. How do you write a text in a window? So, this is your larger screen and this is your window. So, let us say this is my window. And in that, you wanted to write a string like we saw, Namaste CS101 students. Now, the way you write a text is, you first define a bounding rectangle for the text to be written. This rectangle is not a rectangle shape. You define the position of some binding points that left corner is here, left upper corner is here, right lower corner is here. Within that text, whatever, within that bounding uh, uh, rectangular space, any text that you write will be displayed. So, this bounding rectangle is a hypothetical thing. It is not visible to you. You have to define this position and this position. And once you define this position and say, please display this string here, the string will come here. For example, Namaste, whatever, whatever. What a string you write. Here is a program which does that. Notice that I am creating a 15 by 10 window. Notice that the system that EZ windows follows is that first width and then height is uh, uh, 
written. So, 15 is the width, 10 is the height. Notice that this simple window HW which I am opening, okay, this I, HW is short for hello window. I want to say hello to my students, so HW. CS101 window is the title that will appear in that window. This will be the width and height. And additionally, I can specify a parameter position. So, 1 comma 1 means that the whole window with respect to the screen will start at 1 comma 1. These 1, 2, 15, 10, etc. are not pixel values. These are centimeters, actual centimeters. Can you tell me why it is not pixels and why it is centimeters? Okay. First of all, pixels are often relative to a particular hardware that you are using. Suppose your computer has a large resolution, the number of pixels will be 1800 by 1600. A small machine like this, it may be 700 by 600. So, it is very difficult to write in terms of absolute pixels. Okay. Secondly, things become hardware dependent also on what is the pixel size. A centimeter is an absolute unit. It does not matter on which computer you run this. For that computer, that library will automatically convert these centimeters into appropriate number of pixels depending upon the current resolution that you have set for your hardware. And that is why EZ Windows uses size in centimeters. Of course, you can write fractional centimeters, it will appropriately compute things. So, here I am defining a simple window HW. This object is defined here. In my main program, when I say HW dot open, this window will be open. That means this window will be created. Next, you remember I have to define a bounding box for the text. So, this is what I do here. I first, I want to write my Namaste CS101 students in the center of that window. Now, notice this. I know there is a window called HW, but I need not remember where that window is. The absolute position on the screen of my text will depend upon where that window is. If window is somewhere here, the text should be here. Window is somewhere there, text should be there. How do I know where the window is? I want to find out the center of the window. For that, there is a thing called get center. So, for any window, when I say get center, this member function will get me x and y coordinates of the center point of that window automatically. Now, that I assign to another class uh, object called position class. Position class, I name an object called center. I could have said x, y, whatever I wanted. This center is not a simple single value. This center has x and y coordinates actually. That is the definition of the member data elements of class position. So, position also is a class. So, I extract into the position class member center. I could have said position center semicolon and later on I could have said center equal to this but I am initializing it in the class member definition itself. So, center is this. Now, I create the bounding box for the text. So, position upper left, position lower right. Remember, position is a member. So, it is instead of saying x1, y1, x2, y2, position means some x and y. So, I call it position upper left. I am a member of the class and that is equal to center plus position this. So, notice that in classes, I can actually handle two points okay, to be added. Center is a point. Position minus 1, minus 1 is a point. So, what I am doing with respect to center, I want to go minus 1, minus 1 and that becomes my left corner. Similarly, with respect to the same center, I want to go plus 1, plus 1. That will become my right corner. And in this 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter box, I want to write my text. So, the notice how the arithmetic is being done. It is not normal arithmetic. Okay. Having done that, I can display the text for which there is a member function called render text. HW is my window object. It could have been any window. So, if I have 5 windows in any one window, I can use that window dot render text. And whatever I write will be rendered there. Render text require these parameters, upper left, lower right. These are positions, okay. It is not x coordinate, y coordinate, x coordinate, these are positions which in incidentally have x and y coordinate. And then I write the string. 
and I can also specify in which color I would like to write this. Unfortunately, EZ windows being a simplistic system, it does not permit me to write millions of colors. Although the underlying X11 windows permits you to draw individual pixel with any color, EZ windows system, because it is limited to simple shapes, text, etc., etc., it does not permit that. So, it permits some few colors which have been named specifically. Red, blue, green, black, these are the colors which have been named. Then what are the names? They are also available. You can use those names. So, is this clear? How do I draw a, 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 a rectangle? I want to display points with labels. So, here is, here is my window. As I said, there is some text here, some title. Now, in this window, I want to draw points. As I mentioned to you, there is no member function which says draw a point or draw a pixel. So, I will approximate a pixel by a rectangle. Suppose I want to draw a point here, let us say somewhere here, I will draw a small rectangle which is visible to me. I can draw it in any color so that that particular blob, rectangular blob is visible. To me. Just drawing a point in any kind of representation is not very meaningful because I want to write some associated text with that point. So, that is like text, but it is called a label for that point. And I can write that label somewhere here along with that. These are the facilities that I seek. Let us see how do we write these points and labels. Notice the way I am mixing the conventional data structures such as character strings and the classes. Okay. Here I am defining a function called display data this is my function. What are the parameters of display data? First parameter is a pointer to simple window. So, whichever window I want to display data in w, h, w, w 1 whatever. Then I have an integer array, it is a multidimensional array, many rows and two columns. Two columns will contain x coordinate and y coordinates. Okay. So, these are the electrocardiogram points that I have got. I call them ECG signal. Notice the way the parameter is passed. ECG signal name itself will be a pointer, but when you pass a two dimensional array, the exact nature of the two dimensional array storage is not known to the called function unless it knows the columns and rows. It so happens that if it knows number of columns, that is sufficient for it to calculate the pointer addresses because the storage is always row major y. So, first row if there are two columns, then first element, zeroth element, first element, then zeroth element, first element, zeroth element, it is known. So, only columns need to be specified explicitly. You can of course, also specify the rows, that is not objected to, but this is one way of doing it. And then there is of course, something called size, which is the actual number of rows which are used. Remember in your declaration, you may have a 500 points, 1000 points or whatever. So, as many points as you. What am I doing? I am saying for i equal to 0 to size minus 1, I am getting the x coordinate as i 0 and y coordinate as i 1. Apparently, somebody else would have assembled this entire array of positions x and y for those points. Having got these, I want to draw a point. So, I define a point to be an object of rectangle shape. You get my point? Rectangle shape is a class. Of that class, I define an object which I call point. It is an incidental name. I could have called it anything P, R1, whatever one. Now, this point has which are the parameters of this? When I create this object, I am specifying Z, X, Y, blue, point 0.1, point 0.1. That means, x is this, y is this, blue is the color, point 0.1 to point 0.1. And in which window I want to draw it? The window pointed to by z. And z is the pointer I have got, z is the name of the window, so z is the name of the window. Remember, this does not draw a point. This merely defines an object. But this object is being dynamically instantiated. In my program, in the within the executable, I am creating an object. Now, this is something fundamentally different from defining your arrays and int and float variables. 
you can define something in between, but all those definitions are instantiated at the compile time. After compilation, there is no new memory allocation, no nothing happens. In case of classes and objects, the objects are dynamically created. Any memory that is required to hold information about an object is demanded by your compiled program from the operating system. Give me so many bytes, I want to create this object. The operating system will give you so many bytes and this object will be created. So this object is created using dynamically available values of x and y. And having created that object, now you say draw. So point is the object, point dot draw means draw that point. This point will be drawn. Now you want to put a label to that point. You have defined a char array my string at. The printing of label is you print a string first. S print f. That means print a formatted string using i, which is the point number, and x and y coordinates. And this you are printing as percent 2d, percent 2d, percent 2d. You have inserted a character at. So you'll actually get say 5 at 10, comma 20. So 5 is the fifth is the point number at is the word, it's, this is the string. Now this string, instead of rendering it as a text line which we had seen, you can render it as a label item. Label is another class. So you are creating a object of class label called item. What are the parameters for this class uh, objects? First the window in which you want to draw. Second, the bounding parameter, the same thing left corner, uh, sorry, sorry, this is x plus 0.2, to y plus 0.2. to. So uh, this is not the, uh, this is not the bounding box that you write in the text, but this is the starting position where you want this label to add, appear. What you are defining is that if my point was somewhere here, then just below it I want to write this. Thing. So it says x plus 0.2, to, y plus 0.2, to, my string. So this string will appear there. You saw that example, we will once again go very quickly through those demonstrations, so you will see exactly how this program executes and renders it. Once I define this item, I again have to say item dot draw, it will draw that item. Displaying patterns you had, suppose this is your window and the point is if you draw a line, first this line, then let us say from here to here, then here to here, then here to here, then here to here. So you will see some pattern emerging like this. What this program is doing is, it is drawing lines like this, first drawing from horizontal. Then you go down y and before the last point of x, so you draw another line. And last line drawn will be this vertical. So you will get a pattern like this. Then I am also plotting in the same program a mirror image. So I am plotting lines which start from the rightmost corner here. So I'll draw this line first, then maybe this line, then maybe this line, maybe this line, etc. Whatever, and I'll get another pattern. Sorry, it's the other way around. I write this line, this line, and so on. We had seen that pattern. Here is the way I am drawing those lines. Notice the use of assert library, which is useful even here. What I am asserting here, my window dot get status. Get status is another member function. This get status tells you whether window open or window closed. So I want to, it's just like file is open or file is closed. So if I say window dot get status, it will, it should be window open. If it is not window open, I want to assert, that I want to say that assertion has failed, I want to get out. I define x, y and i, j as float <coughs> and I draw some lines to create an interesting pattern. My window is 15 by 15. So notice what I am doing. I am running a loop from x equal to 0 to just 15, uh, less than 15 in steps of 0.2. Now on my window, I first render a line from position x0 to 0, 0,15 minus x. As x changes, you will notice that this line will also shift like this. Okay, first directly here, then here, then here. And this I draw in black. Simultaneously, I render another line which is 15x and 15 minus x, uh, 15. Okay. So 15x, x will be 0 initially, 
so this becomes the y coordinate now. So I am drawing a line starting with x equal to 15, y equal to 0, going up to x equal to 15 minus x, that is 15 only, and up to 50. So 15, 0 to 15, 15, that is the line I am drawing. So full vertical. And then accordingly that line will also show. So when I complete this iteration, it would have drawn a large number of lines creating the pattern that we, we saw, we will see that again. Displaying shapes, again the same thing, we have already seen how rectangular shapes are written, drawn, but I can actually draw triangular shape with some color inside, I can draw a line, I can draw an ellipse. For each of these, these are all separate classes defined, rectangular shape, uh, line, ellipse, etc., etc. For each of which there are member data elements, that means there are some parameters by which you prescribe those values. And again, render line, render ellipse, or draw, all such member functions are available. How do I display bitmaps? This is my window, and I want to, I have a photograph. Now photograph will be in a file. So let us say I have a file called pic.jpj, agreed? This is the most common uh, file I will have from any digital photograph. First, I will have to write, a, use a convert utility, which is part of this program, and get this file converted into pic.xpm. XPM is a file format with which the EZ windows can deal with. So EZ windows is a member function which says load a bitmap with this file. So what that EZ windows member function will do is it will open that file, read all the pixel specifications and draw those in whatever area you have defined. So this will be actual pixel drawing. How it can do that? It does not permit you to draw pixels. It does not permit you to draw millions of colors. But remember, it is ultimately based on X11 window system, which can do everything. Now, X11 has a fundamental facility of what is known as raster image drawing. Raster means going point by point, point by point and drawing something. All that EZ windows apparently is doing is it is invoking that facility and taking pixel data from the image file and putting it there. So you can draw bitmaps anywhere that you want, any bitmap that you want. Additionally, what that program does is that that program actually draws a bitmap, then permits you to move the mouse somewhere and says you click, oh, you want that bitmap to be redrawn here. So how, how does that picture move actually? Picture cannot move. So what you do is you erase that picture and redraw that picture at new position. So it appears as if the picture is moved. And you can do a variety of very interesting graphic things. You can actually give an appearance of moving. So many animations, for example, like if you are simulating the movement of a ball under gravitation when it is thrown. So it will come out here, bounce back, go further, bounce back. You can actually show different points and show the ball. And you erase, redraw, erase, redraw, erase, redraw. So it will keep moving like that. You can actually demonstrate an animation. Here is a standard definition of a window that we often use, say window 1, 25 by 15, position 1, 1. Now I define a bitmap object. So bitmap is another class. Remember the nomenclature, it typically is first letter capital and some other word letter capital. Incidentally, my colleague Ms. Firoza has written a set of coding standards. So I will be putting them up. And it is expected that when you write your programs, you try to adhere to those coding standards. So that programs written by anyone will look very similar in structure, similar in nomenclature. That is a mandatory requirement in professional programming environment. We would like you to learn part of it. So bitmap is a class. And of that class, you are defining an object called W1BMP. And this object is tagged to the window W1, which I have defined earlier. That means whenever I ask the system to load that bitmap or draw that bitmap, it will be drawn in W1 because W1 is implicitly associated with that object called W1BMP. 
this W1 PMP is my name, I could have given any name to it. The way I display bitmap is like this, I say W1 BMP dot load scene one dot xpm. This is an absolute file name, which means it must be in the current directory. So as I said, the scene that you saw was the was the scene from some picture from my camera. I use the convert to convert it from JPJ to XPM. I have got several other uh, 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 things which we will see that. You remember I had shown you a fingerprint image. The fingerprint image in EZ windows can be displayed like that. I have a robo picture. Sony is the name of my esteemed colleague. He is a professor. He was like you, one of my students in CS101 course. He is the first one to introduce EZ windows in CS101 when he taught it. Most of the programs that I am demonstrating were originally written by him. I have merely modified them. It is only appropriate that we see his photograph in the demonstrations. So let's see that. What I have done is in the sample programs, uh, all the files are there and these are all commented. So you can simply remove those comments, recompile and run it. Of course, a far better technique would be in actual practice, you want to show different pictures in your windows, you should ask for a file name as input. Take that file name which is a normal string and put that string array of characters here as a parameter and it will open that. So these are all definitions of bitmaps. When you load, nothing gets displayed. All that is happening is that W1 BMP object, which was defined by you as a bitmap object, now contains data from the file. So load merely means inside memory you have an object defined, the data is on file, BMP load dot load will mean take the data from that file and put it inside this object, bitmap object. Later on when you say W1 BMP dot set position and W1 BMP draw. So this will set the position. Initially it will draw at 1.0, 1.0 and then it will draw. Any position that you give it will draw at that point. And this is the exact issue that if I want to keep the image moving, if I change this position, then it will draw at that position. But I must first erase the image. So just like W1 BMP dot draw will draw, W1 BMP dot erase will erase. Plotting graphs, we do not have a function to draw points. We used rectangles earlier. Now we will use to draw a line using w dot render line. Okay? W is a window in which I am drawing a line. Line is from position to position. But if I give the same position here and same position here, then obviously it will be a line from point to point and hopefully I should get the point. Okay? This is blue. What is this 0, 0.0? This is being defined as absolute x and y. Okay. I will leave it to wonder. You just look at the documentation for line, render line, see what those parameters are, you will find out. It is, it is trivial. Before I shift over, very quickly we will see, we have seen most of the samples. I will just show you the last few ones to tell you how they work. But this is how you use EZ windows. There is a tar.gz package. Incidentally, this package also works on Windows environment. There is another version available. So those of you who have Windows machines at home, you can try and use them. But Ubuntu, this is how it will work. So you should compile and link your programs using a special script API compile. So instead of saying C++, you should say API compile myprog, not myprog.cpp. I will tell you the reason in a moment. Okay. So the program is myprog.cpp and it will create an executable called myprog. You can simply run it by dot slash my prop. Okay. This is the reason why you should not give something dot cpp. Remember I told you the compilation phase consists of pre-processing, then compiling, then assembling and linking. Here I have shown different portions. In API compile there are different commands. API compile is known to be a shell script. So when you try API, type API compile, actually the commands in this file get executed one after another. So the first command is C++ minus I user x11 r6 include minus I something something. So this tells the compiler that before you compile include these files. Just like your include dot you have said include something dot h include C string. Normally C++ will automatically include some standard libraries which you are given include. Here also you would have include statements in your main program. But where is the location of those? 
that depends upon where your EZ windows is. The way you will style your location is, you will install this package, you will have a EZ windows directory in which there will be include, lib, etc., etc., and there will be a samples directory where your sample programs will be there. So, notice that I am saying include this X11 R6. X11 is the base library, revision 6 of that. That is not with you, that is somewhere in the main system, that is why slash user slash x11 r6 slash include. But this says dot dot ez windows slash include. That means I am in the samples directory, above me, uh, below next to me is a include directory which is part of ez windows. So I go first, go to ez windows and go to this include directory. Minus c, okay. So this means you just compile, do not create a final output uh, assembled pro link program. So, minus c dollar one dot cpp will create dollar one dot o, that is the object file. Now, it says c plus plus minus o create an output file called dollar one using dollar one dot o and then link it with user x11 library x minus i x11 minus l dot dot ez windows dot lib minus l ez win slash user slash lib etc etc. All these additional libraries get created when you install the package. So, this is the program which draws a, uh, this is Professor Sony. This photograph I think belongs to the time when he was like you a student here. But he, he currently heads the Sitara and in a, a world renowned authority in basic algorithms and so on. So, we can also keep moving Sony wherever we want. There was another one where I have a small bitmap image of a robo. So, this is our robo and robo can be made to dance like this. Now, here in this program, I am moving it as per the mouse click. Nothing prevents you from writing your own ingenious algorithm whereby you can make the robo dance around. Nothing prevents you from drawing a maze and make the robo walk through that maze. Nothing prevents you from writing a complicated intelligent algorithm to figure out what should be the next step that may, uh, that robo should take and make the robo move there. Now, what we are looking at are display characteristics, how to handle display. Underlying any project that you do, there has to be a lot of interesting and useful computations that you do independent. Combine that with this and you get a absolutely production grade, industry grade, professionally written software. So, that is why it may be useful, I thought you would you would like to use that. There was a shape uh, thing, I think. You look at these shapes, there could be many shapes that you could draw, any kind of shapes you could draw. Here I have drawn a red rectangle and then a white rectangle on top. If I had drawn this line earlier, this portion of the line would have gone. Since I have drawn this line later, it superimposes on this. So, you can see variety of graphic characteristics. So, in conclusion I will say that using the EZ window classes and class libraries, you now have a reasonably good facility to handle any kind of display that you want to look at. Last year people created using the same EZ windows, uh, snakes and ladder boards, and they actually showed the movement of coins there. There are, there are people who have done all, all kinds of crazy things using this. Okay? So, you are most welcome to use them. Thank you so much.